Now, a question I get asked a lot on this channel is if that if you're someone who plays on AG pitches, FG pitches, which boots should you get? And really, you have only three options. So number one is probably the easiest but it's also the most expensive and that is you get a pair of boots for each playing surface so if you play on firm ground you get a pair of firm ground boots and then you get also a separate pair of ag boots for when you play on ag pitches it's simple but it's expensive so maybe you can wear a takedown model for the time you play on ag pitches and you use the more expensive boot to be the um the one that you play on grass pitches but you know just do what suits your budget so option number two, which is a bit rarer nowadays and is a bit controversial depending on which boot it is, number two would be that you get a boot with a hybrid sole plate. So that would be a sole plate that the brand claims is both for FG and AG pitches. Now, this is only for some boots because even though brands may claim that this their boots are for both AG and firm ground, the stud pattern and the configuration of the outsole may say otherwise and i'll explain that in option number three now option three is good if you have or you can only afford one pair of boots that's within your budget or maybe ag boots aren't as easily accessible in wherever in the world you're from option number three is also the most dangerous but i'm going to show you how to mitigate that danger so option three is that if you can only get one pair of boots, you get a pair of firm ground boots, but not just any firm ground boots, but more specifically firm ground boots where the studs are more round and conical. Now, the reason why you want a pair of firm ground boots with conical slash round studs is because they allow for less rotational traction. So there's less likelihood of your foot getting trapped and you're getting serious joint injuries when you play on artificial pitches. So what a lot of people don't realize is that strenuous or high amounts of exposure to high rotational traction wears down your joints and can lead to serious injuries i know a lot of people who've probably played on ag pitches with like very aggressive stud patterns and they probably said oh i've never been injured but it's just one of those things like don't let it be a problem when it becomes a problem you know always try your best to kind of avoid these issues in the first place now, even though I personally suggest that you do get a pair of AG boots if you can for AG pitches, um, getting a pair of firm ground boots to play on AG pitches, which have conical studs, is probably the least of all the evils. And that's because they don't grip to the surface as much. So there's less likelihood of your foot getting stuck when you're making this kind of cutting or just sharp change in direction. And that's opposed to like longer studs or chevrolet slash angled shaped studs which have much more grip to the AG surfaces than conical studs would do. And really and truly, I can maybe go into a bit more depth on like the differences between the different stud shapes and how they can affect and mitigate or like increase your risk of injury using just, you know, silverware that you used to eat your food with. So your conical studs would be your spoons as they allow you to still get leverage with the ground while still being able to maneuver. So your longer molded studs would be your forks as they provide stability with the surface. And your angled studs slash chevron step studs would be your knives as they allow for quick grip and these kind of a lot help with these sharp cutting movements as well and the length of the studs as in like maybe i don't know maybe you could say it's height this time um that also matters as well so with longer studs you're gonna get kind of more grip to the ground as opposed to shorter ones and that's why with kind of most ag soul plates what you will see is that most of the time the studs are very short and shallow this means that they won't grip to the ground too much now the three kind of stud shapes i talked about earlier those are like just the three main kind of basic ones so what you will find with most boots nowadays is like they'll mix and match geometries based on those three shapes to get like the different properties so you will get like long blader studs with like um sharp edges or angled edges should i say that provide a good amount of stability and traction as well with the playing surface and sometimes you get short studs, you get um, some kind of maybe kind of angled studs with a bit of curvature rather than like a sharp angle at them just to provide a bit more kind of maneuverability so there's not too much grip as well. So when it does come to picking a pair of um, firm ground boost that you're going to use both on FG and AG, I'd recommend one that incorporates more of that. So if it does have like a, a kind of a 
fused um, geometry when it comes to the stars make sure like a lot of the angles or like the shape of the stars is round rather than at sharp angles and just to kind of emphasize my point as well i've got a bit of turf in my garden it's not necessarily like 4g or 3g but like it's just to kind of give you a idea of the amount of like freedom you're going to get wearing different types of like um, stud shapes on artificial surfaces so please do take it for a pinch of salt like i said it's not fg it's not 4g but just to give you guys a better idea So like I said, just to emphasize my point originally, I'm going to show you how much kind of freedom of movement you have of different um, soul plates on turf. So this is not a turf pitch, but um, this is take, so take this with a bit of a pinch of soul, but you know, it's still synthetic. So you kind of get a gist of what I'm going to say. So I've got four different boots with four different types of soul plates. So first you've got the Adi Pure 2. Um, as you can see, this is an FG soul plate, but it's got that more kind of forgiving. It's got Boot, um, studs which are round of some kind of conicalness you got a few angles and some straight edges as well so you can see that combination of different geometries and then i know some of you are going to be crazy and use like sg boots on like turf pitches which is insane but anyway but like i'm going to show you so here i've got the hypervenom soft ground here you've got the few on seven very aggressive soul play as you can see only conical studs i mean not conical sorry chevron shaped studs there and then you have this one. This is the Adidas A15.1. This is probably a colorway you've never seen before because this is from my Adidas, which was Adidas equivalent to Nike ID back in the day. So yeah, this is supposed to be an AG FG soul play, but as you can see, pretty much only conical round studs. So yeah, let's get into the freedom of movement bit. So first up, the ID peel. So as you can see, a decent amount of grip but still allows for like kind of movement i won't do this too much because my mom will kick me out <laughs> for ripping up her garden but yeah you can see the movement hypervenom as you can see it's a bit more forced to actually get the boots to like pivot and move but not a great amount of freedom there next to furon as you can see, <laughs> very hard to move and move and stuff like that. So imagine you're running at high pace and then if you're trying to change direction. Well, I don't know if you're fast, but you know what I mean. So fast for you, but um, you can see I'm trying to move my foot. I have to like go like this to move it. I have to raise my leg, but as you can see, not a lot of movement. But like I said before, please do take this with a pinch of salt. Then we have the eighth of the AGFG. So, as you can see, no issues. And I don't need to move my whole foot just to get to move. So, yeah, you can see. A lot more freedom to move my foot. However, apart from like the increased risk of injury from using FG boots on artificial services, there are other things that you need to worry about that maybe it's not that big an issue, but like you should know about these. So if you're going to make this risk, because like football boots nowadays, like I said, they're expensive. So I say it's quite a bit of an investment as well. So, you know, you need to make sure you're making the right choices and have like all the best or the needed information that you need to know before making a purchase. So number one is that using FG boots on AG pitches can invalidate the warranty on them. I'm not sure how strict some brands are when they like check if you use your boots were to like, I don't know, so you get some sole separation pretty early on. I don't know how strict they are or if they'd be able to tell, but like, yeah, if they are able to tell, it completely invalidates your warranty. So if you were to send them back, you're not going to get your refund. Number two, because of how kind of like abrasive the surfaces of some artificial pitches compared to grass, your studs are going to wear down a lot quicker. And number three, again, it kind of links back to that, like, uh, talk of how abrasive uh, the artificial pitches is compared to grass pitches your boots won't last as long some boots have a bit of more reinforcement because brands know whatever people are still going to use fg boots and ag boots but yeah some boots don't necessarily have that reinforcement and so they're more likely to you know start breaking down earlier as if you were supposed to use them on the intended playing surface now i've talked and whatever i've waffled a bit but like 
if you actually want recommendations on what kind of boots you should be looking for um here are three that i would recommend straight away that kind of fulfill what i've talked about so number one would be the mizuno morelia neo 4 or any of the morelia neos um i always get those mixed up i'm not sure if it's the neo first or the morelia first but you get what i mean you'll see the soul place and you'll understand um the tempo premier 3 is also another good option it's also a more economical option as well as opposed to like all the other boosts that you see on the market and then my last would be the adidas copper pure 2 again another boot where you see the kind of like fusion of geometries but most of the studs in terms of shape a lot of it is mostly round and conical and just to summarize what i've said in this video if you're someone who plays on fg and ag pitches and don't know what boots to get you have three options so number one is the most expensive one you get a pair of boots for each playing surface so one for ag and one for fg option number two is that you find a boot which has a hybrid sole play so the brand says they can be used on both fg and ag pitches but be sure to make sure the studs are mostly round and conical if they are so and then number three is you get a pair of FG boots that have mostly round or conical studs. And that's been it for the video, guys. Make sure you leave a like. Don't forget to subscribe. My name is Sub. This has been Sub Sounds Thank you for watching. Peace out.